Hello everyone and welcome to another sewing vlog. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made some jeans with color blocked front panels that are dyed using coffee and tea. So let's get started! For fabric I'm using this upcycled denim in natural fleck from Blackbird Fabrics and the pattern I'm going to be using is the Make by TFS May jean and I'm going to be making view C which is the curved leg in a size 12. This is my third time making this pattern and I really love how it fits. So I'm starting by cutting out all of my main pattern pieces from my fabric, which I had already pre-washed and dried, and I'm just making sure to clip into all of my notches and make all of my markings. I also like to use the smaller pieces of fabric that I cut away to cut out smaller pattern pieces like the pockets and belt loops to try and reduce my fabric waste as much as possible. For the front pocket bags, I'm using a lighter weight cotton linen blend that I had left over from a previous project. I drafted the front leg panel pattern piece myself, and I'll put the photos I used for inspiration on the screen somewhere. Um, these are the utility jeans from Rudy Jude. So to draft this panel, I basically looked at these photos and made note of where they extended to and hit at different points on the leg. And then I marked those points and traced my pattern out from the front leg pattern piece. And I did this in Illustrator because that was the easiest for me, but you could also do this with some tracing paper and just the printed pattern. Just don't forget to add seam allowance to your pattern piece once you're finished tracing. And because I wanted to dye this fabric, I cut away a larger piece than my pattern, just in case of any shrinkage during the dyeing process. Before we move on, I wanted to thank the partner for today's video, which is Desenio. Desenio makes high quality, affordable artwork for your home. All of their prints are printed on FSC certified paper, and they have so many designs to choose from on their website, so you can pick what suits your unique personal taste and style. I love Desenio because they make it both easy and fun to add more personality and interest to my home, and I can easily swap out the prints if I feel like I need a change. I chose a mix of illustrations in light oak frames to place in a few specific empty spots in my home, and I love the extra bit of color they bring to my space. Desenio has given me a discount code to share with you, so if you're interested you can check out the details in the description box below. So thank you again Desenio for partnering with me on this video, and let's get back to it! To start the dyeing process, I'm just filling a bowl with water and soaking my fabric so that it's fully wet, and this will help it dye evenly. Then I filled my largest stainless steel pot with water and set that on the stove on a low heat setting, covering it with the lid. To dye the fabric, I'm using this old ground coffee that I have, and don't let the tin fool you, this is real coffee, but I just keep it in there so that it's more fresh than in a bag. I'm actually not able to drink coffee anymore because it upsets my stomach, so I always drink these kinds of coffee alternatives, but they're just not the same, and let me tell you, this whole process smelled so good, and I don't think I've ever wanted a cup of coffee more in my life. So I ended up using about three quarters of a cup of coffee grounds and I poured it into a small muslin bag, tying it tightly so that they wouldn't come loose in the water. Once the water was at, I'd say, about a low simmer, I dropped the bag of coffee in and I also threw in a few black tea bags as well, just for good measure. I covered the pot and set a timer for 15 minutes to let everything kind of percolate and darken. After 15 minutes I checked the color and it looked pretty dark, and actually the cloth bag with the coffee in it was turning quite dark itself, so I decided it was time to put my fabric in. I removed the coffee and tea bags first just because I didn't want them rubbing up against my fabric and possibly causing it to dye unevenly. And then I fully submerged my wet fabric and covered it again and left the pot on the lowest heat setting for about 45 minutes. During that time I did stir the fabric around intermittently and I ended up totally splashing on myself, so take it from me if you're going to try this then don't wear light clothing like I was. Wear something dark or an apron to protect yourself. Um, luckily I put these clothes in the wash right away afterwards and the dye didn't stain them. 
After 45 minutes, I filled my bowl up again with some water and a splash of vinegar, and then I soaked my fabric in this mixture for about 15 minutes, and this helps to set the dye. And after that, I rinsed it with some cool water just to get any last bits of the dye out of the fabric and then hung it up to dry. While my fabric was drying, it started to lighten up quite a bit. Um, so while it was still damp, I actually ended up just throwing it back in the pot, which I hadn't thankfully dumped out at that point yet, and left it in for a few hours um, with no heat, just soaking. And after I did that whole process again, this is the color that it turned out. So here's how it looks up against the original fabric as well. I think it turned out quite a nice color. I was kind of hoping originally that it would go a bit darker, um, but you'll see at the end, once the garment comes together, I actually ended up really liking this kind of lighter tone on tone. And my fabric was pretty wrinkled and stiff after the dye bath, so I used the steam setting on my iron to smooth everything out. And then I cut out my front panel pieces, and my fabric didn't actually shrink that much um, during the dye bath, so I also ended up cutting a few of the smaller pieces as well to do some more color blocked details. Um, so for the coin pocket, back patch pockets, and back yoke as well. To start, I'm pre-pressing as many of the pieces that I can. I love that this pattern has a pre-pressing guide up front before the actual steps because I find it so much easier to batch press everything at once instead of step by step throughout the sewing process. Then I'm going to attach my front panels to the front leg pieces and just get that step out of the way before doing anything else. The panels are stitched on three sides with two rows of top stitching, but I'm first top stitching along the center of the bottom of each panel because I'm going to leave that space open. I think this is how it's done on a lot of the double front jeans that I've seen, and I don't exactly know why this part is left open, so if you do know the reason, then please comment below. Um, so I had just marked on my pattern pieces with some notches where to start and end my stitching and I'm making sure before I get started as well to swap out my all-purpose machine needle for a denim sewing needle. For my top stitching thread, I'm using this heavy duty thread in a sort of light brown for a bit of contrast. And then for my bobbin thread and just regular seams, I'm using my regular polyester thread in a color that matches my denim fabric. Then I am pinning my panels to my front leg pieces, matching the notches along the side, and top stitching all of the way around, leaving those gaps open where I had top stitched previously. With the front panels attached and out of the way, I started working my way through the instructions, starting with the back yokes and patch pockets. Sewing a pair of jeans like this, I'd say, is a lot of work. It's not necessarily difficult, but there are a lot of steps involved just overall. And then for each part of the process, there are multiple steps within that. So for example, you have to first straight stitch your seam, finish the edges together, press the seam allowance, and then do your top stitching. And because the fabric can be really bulky, it is sometimes really difficult to get it through your machine and you have to manually turn your wheel or things might get stuck. So it does take a lot of patience, but in the end, the result is so worth it. And it's just such an accomplishment to be able to say that you made something so involved.
Now that the back is assembled, it's time to install the zipper. And all of the hardware that I'm using for this make is from a jeans hardware kit that I purchased from Blackbird Fabrics as well. Zippers can be super intimidating and I used to find them really scary, especially zip flies in particular, because I was so worried about making sure that everything lined up properly and the instructions can sometimes be like really convoluted. But the method in this pattern I think is really good. It's really straightforward and all of the instructions are really clear and it ends up with such a nice finished result. The zipper that came with the kit was too long, so to start I'm just shortening it by doing some whip stitches by hand and then trimming the zipper with some craft scissors, not my fabric scissors, um, just in case they get dented by the metal teeth. Then I'm just following the steps for putting together the zip fly as laid out in the instructions. To sew zippers, I always like to use a really narrow zipper foot, and this is different than the one that came with my machine. I just feel like this one works much better and I'm able to get much closer to the teeth of the zipper. When I'm sewing a zipper, I like to unzip it part way, and then just before I reach the zip, I raise my presser foot and zip it back up before continuing on with my stitching. And this just makes sure that there's no bumpiness and that my line of stitching is perfectly straight. For doing the top stitching along the fly, I usually don't use tailor's tacks or chalk or anything like that. I just use pins to guide where I want my stitching to go and I find that that works well enough. I usually find stitching around the bottom curve the most difficult part and it helps to shorten your stitch length here. My line of stitching still didn't end up perfectly but that's okay, I'm trying to learn to stop perfection from being the goal because it's not possible and instead just enjoy the process and also learn to love those little details that show the fact that this is a handmade garment. The next step after installing the zipper is to do the front pockets, and the rest of the instructions in the pattern from here on out are pretty straightforward, so I'm going to drop the voiceover for a little bit until the end so you can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the process with some background music until we get to the finishing steps.
right, so here is what my pants were looking like once all of the steps were completed. And finally, we just have to install the hardware. So I'm starting with the button for the fly, and I've just marked where the buttonhole needs to go with a pin. And I'm using the buttonhole foot and the automatic buttonhole setting on my machine with my top stitching thread to do that. And unfortunately it didn't work that well the first couple of times I tried to do this, um, I think because of the thickness of the fabric. So I had to go over it a few times myself manually to make sure that it was fully secure. To make a hole for the button, I use kind of a strange method because I don't have an awl. So I use a really thick nail and just hammer it through my fabric to create a hole that I can then push the button through. And this actually works really well, especially for the thicker parts where I need to install the rivets. And then I don't have an anvil either, so I'm using the side of an old hammer as my hard surface to hammer the button into place. And I'm following the exact same method for the rivets as well. You don't need to install these, they are optional, and instructions are given in the pattern for doing bar tacks with your machine instead. But I like using these as I feel they give the denim a really polished and professional finish. They can be a bit tricky to install, but I find it's best to make your hole, insert the back of your rivet first, and then use some wire cutters to kind of trim your rivet a little bit if it's too long. And then just make sure that you're hammering on a really hard metal surface, otherwise it's not going to work. And do some really firm taps with your hammer to just set them in place. And with the hardware installed, this pair of jeans is finished. So here's a look at the final result. Like I said before, I absolutely love the fit of these jeans and I think that this shaped leg view is the perfect style for this kind of double front denim. I really didn't know how these were going to turn out when I started this project, and I think by the end I was actually really surprised by how much I like them. A lot of work and love went into making these, and so I'm really excited to start wearing them.
So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this process. If you did, please don't forget to give this video a like, leave a comment down below, and also subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more like this in the future. Also, make sure that you click that little notification bell to make sure that you don't miss when I post new videos as well. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day or evening, and I'll see you in the next video.